Hello everyone. This video walks through completing packet tracer assignment 4.2.1.3 configuring ether channel. This packet tracer assignment is a part of the Cisco RNS scaling networks version 6 curriculum. Now in this lab we are going to configure ether channel um, using our Cisco 2960 switches and packet tracer. Now usually we have some type of redundancy uh, where you see there are two links going to the same switch so you know to create that redundancy. In the previous chapter we learned that with STP and in general there could be uh, STP is used to block some of those loops that we have so you see some of the ports and blocking mode up there. Now this technically only utilizes about half of the available bandwidth and ports that we've got because some of them are in blocking mode so it's only it's kind of funneling our traffic in one direction in case one were to go down then it'll make adjustments but if we are usually not experiencing issues we can actually aggregate links together up to eight of them actually so for fast ethernet uh, ports you think about they're 100 they operate at 100 megabits per second you could actually aggregate eight of them together to get 800 megabits per second in total bandwidth if you aggregated eight gigabit ethernet ports which operate at one gigabit per second then you're looking at around eight gigabits per second total bandwidth. So you kind of increase your efficiency for your network by really like it's kind of like logically aggregating these together and you can do it a couple ways. You've got the port aggregation protocol PAGP which we'll configure in this lab. That is Cisco proprietary though so you wouldn't be able to use that on non Cisco devices and then we'll look at LACP link aggregation control protocol which is actually an open standard developed by IEEE and the number is 802.3 AD. Okay, both of them are a version of Ether Channel, um, and you just kind of have to decide your network needs for which one you're doing based off of your hardware and ports. Now, a lot of devices kind of limit you to six uh, port channel um, groupings, and we'll kind of see what that means in a moment. So, first, we're going to do something simple. We're going to assign each host name a, or every switch a host name. So, we'll do enable config t host name s1. And it says make sure that your ports are in correct trunking mode. So I'm going to do interface range FA 0 21 through uh, 22 there. All right. And then um, actually I can do multiple at one time. Let's do that. So do that. Then G 0 1 through 2. Okay. So we're doing FA uh, 0 21 through 22 and then G 0 1 through 2. And we're going to do switch port mode trunk. Now again, or make sure whenever you use the interface range command, you want to configure the ports the exact same way. So we did interface range FA 0 21 through 22, those two going to S3, and then G 0 1 through 2, those going to S2. Okay. Now we're going to go to S2, enable config T host name s2 we should be able to do that in our sleep by now um, and then interface range fa0 uh, 23 through 24 those ports are going to um, s3 and then g0 1 through 2 that are going over to s1 and we're going to do switch port mode trunk okay then we'll go to s3 Enable config T, host name S3, interface range FA0 21 through 24 here because we've got 21, 22, 23, 24. So we don't need a comma because the interface types are the same. Um, so then switch port mode trunk. All right. Now, they're all in trunking mode. It says that you can um, confirm that with the show interfaces trunk. We know we typed it in and it is operating correctly. Now, we're going to first configure port channel one. Port channels are basically the two ports grouped together or multiple ports grouped together, however many you're doing. So we're going to group together two at a time here. For S1, between S1 and S3, which is FA0 21, 22, FA0 21, 22 on both ends to keep it simple. Um, we're going to go to S1 first, all right, and we'll do interface range, FA 
what do we say, 0, 21, and 22. Okay, and then we're going to do the channel group 1 mode desirable. Now there's three different modes, or there's several different modes you can put it in, and there's a chart in chapter 4 that'll show you kind of like which modes negotiate with uh, which port aggregation protocol or the LACP protocol. So the desirable mode allows you to actively negotiate to form a PEGAP link. So it's going to be listening for what the other end is in, but it's hoping that it's in PGAP. Okay. So channel group one mode desirable for those two ports. Okay. And then we're going to put it in a port channel. So interface port channel one. And we usually keep the number the same there. Okay. Now we've already put it in switch port mode trunk. I know it tells you to do that afterwards, but we've already done that. So everything should be okay there. Okay. Now I'm going to go over to switch three. I'm going to do the exact same thing for those two ports. So interface range FA0 21 through 22. Oh, sorry. Channel group one mode desirable. So what it does is it's actively trying to negotiate to form that PAGP link when you see the desirable mode. And then interface port channel one. So you want to keep it the same as the other end. And again, we already did the switch port mode trunk command, so everything is good. Now you notice they've turned to red momentarily between switch one and uh, three. But that's because they're trying to negotiate with each other. Now you see they changed to orange um, for FA021 and 22 on switch one and three. And now they're trying to negotiate that PAGP um, ether channel grouping. So I'm going to fast forward the time. We see it turn green. So I'm going to go back to S1 and you can do a show ether channel summary. And voila, we see group one in port channel one. PAGP is the protocol and FA021 and FA022 are in that aggregation. It shows you there's one total grouping going on here. We haven't configured another one yet. And this legend up here shows you, it says S is layer two and U is in use. So that's what you see here, SU. That means it is operating like we want it to. So if you did the same thing on the other end, you see 21 and 22 on S3, PAGP is a protocol and it is up and in use on layer two. Now we're not operating at layer three, obviously, because 2960s don't even do layer three. So, all right, that is configuring the PAGP protocol. Now, again, you would need two Cisco devices to do that on both ends. Okay. Now let's look at configuring LACP for Ether channel. Now this is if you'd have like an open standard, if you didn't have a Cisco device on the other end, you could still do it if it supported LACP. So we're going to configure this between S1 and S2. These are G01 and G02 ports. Okay. So I'm going to do interface range G01 through 2. We've already got them in trunking mode and everything. So channel group 2 mode active. Okay. So while putting it in active mode, you notice too, we're not using... Um, port channel one because that's already been taken up. We want to use a different one. So port channel two is what we're doing or group two mode active. Active instead of desirable means it is ready to be a LACP link. Okay. It's not negotiating. It'll just always come up in um, or actively seeking to negotiate an LACP um, configuration instead of PAGP. Okay. Then we'll do port interface port channel. Okay, we've already got it in trunking mode, so we're good there. You could also, at that point, limit it to how many, uh, you know, VLANs you wanted to carry across the trunk link, but we're just going to carry all of them. Okay, so now we're going to go to the other end, S2, interface range, G0, 1 through 2, channel group 2, mode make sure it wants us to put both in active. I think it does.
Yes. So both modes and active. Okay. And then um, interface port channel two. Make sure you get your numbers right because again, you see they turn red momentarily before they start negotiating as well. Then you'll see it uh, go to orange, and then come up in green as it exchanges information. But again, now we're in port channel two. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward time a little bit here, <clears throat> and you notice on both now when you do the show do show ether channel summary, we've now got two of them. Port channel two though, it shows it's layer two and up, but it says LACP instead of PAGP, and it shows you the uh, G01 and two ports. Same thing on S2, if I do a do show ether channel summary, LACP, G01 and two, layer two up, port channel two. Okay, so that configures the LACP mode. Now we're going to configure one between S2 and S3 down here in port channel 3. Okay, so it tells us we're going to um, use channel group 3 mode, and you see all the modes are active, auto, desirable, own, passive, and it gives you a little description if you do a question mark on each one. So on switch 2, interface range. FA0 23 through 24 are the ports we're doing here. And we're going to do channel group 3 mode passive. Okay. Now, again, passive allows it to be an LACP only if the other end detects LACP. So if it detects LACP on the other end, then you're good to go. But if it doesn't, then it just won't do anything. Okay. So it's not really like putting it in LACP mode already. Active would put it in there unconditionally. It's just always going to be in LACP searching for that. Okay. So that's the kind of end that's going to make this end negotiate with LACP since we put it, we're going to put them both in that uh, framework or mindset. So interface port channel three. Okay. We already got it in trunking mode. So now we're going to go over to S3 and do interface range FA0 23 through 24 channel group 3 mode and instead of passive now because you got two passives they're not going to negotiate, negotiate right we're going to do active that's going to put it in LACP mode no matter what then we'll do interface port channel 3 okay and that you see again it turn red then you're going to see it turn orange and then green again as it negotiates because they're trying to figure out what's on each end as it exchanges information okay and i'm gonna fast forward time a little bit again and s3 if i do a show do show ether channel summary we see we now got port channel 3 is using lacp 23 and 24 port and here, same thing. Now we see port channel 3, FA0, 23, and 24. You notice there's no port channel 1 on S2 because, again, we didn't involve it. That's between S1 and S3. Okay. Now, one thing you'll notice, and the directions tell you this, is notice how S1 has now became orange. Now, remember, STP is running here, so we can try to prevent loops on all this redundancy so that we don't shut down our network because too many loops can just eat up your bandwidth and available network. So we are going to have to do something to turn those back on because it's not going to aggregate correctly if it's turned off because they're now STP has put it in blocking mode. Okay, so if we remember back to chapter three, hopefully you did that before you got this far, um, we configured different switches to be the root primary for certain VLANs. Okay, so remember there's a spanning tree instance for every VLAN here. So VLAN one might be our main one that we're using, even though you can have technically a lot of them. So we're going to go to S1 and remember our spanning tree commands. We'll do spanning dash tree. Okay, and you can use a question mark here. Then you see VLAN. Okay, we're going to do VLAN 1. Priority. Okay, and it says we can set it to be the primary root 
Um, we are going to, instead of using root, we're going to use the number. So we'll do priority here. And then you see it says numbers uh, 0 through 61,440 in increments of 4096. So we're going to set it to 24,000. 576. You can just use root if you wanted to, not for this lab because I think it's looking for the number. Um, but that number, remember, the lower the priority number, it the basically the lowest priority number kind of in golf, like the lowest score wins. Same thing here, lowest priority number wins the root uh, voting negotiation between all the switches as it's doing that election process, what it's called. Um, so spanning tree one, uh, VLAN, spanning tree VLAN one, priority. 24,576. Okay. That will turn those on eventually as it again continues. So let's for, fast forward time and voila, you see it turn it on. Okay. <clears throat> now you notice again is trying to block other ports, but that's uh, for another, another lab, another day. Now that gives us a completion of 100 out of 100. And we can kind of see again, everything is operating correctly as far as aggregating those links together. So we've aggregated fast ethernet ports. So if we do two of those, it's 200 megabits per second. If we do the gigabit ethernet ports, um, then those are our um, two gigabits per second. So the reason being before we did that priority, these two were shut off because STP is going to shut off something. It's not just going to leave everything up in case you've got like multiple VLANs. Like in chapter three, we set it up where different switches were root priority or primary root for different VLANs. So if you got that going on, then maybe nothing will be shut off. But here, since they're all doing VLAN one, then um, and we haven't, we've only set that up here. It's going to block some ports, but you would not want to block the gigabit ports and leave the fast ethernet ports open, right? You want to leave open the faster port. So we've got two gigabits per second over here where this one, oops, this one is only operating at 200 megabits per second versus two gigabits per second. So obviously you see the difference here, 200 megabits per second, that would be 2000 megabits per second in the same, um, measurement unit. So again, the lab's at 100 out of 100. That's how you configure it here. So hopefully that helped you complete this particular lab.